That's half of it. Perfect. Okay, so we're starting on page one of the questions. Okay, Gary and his wife, Sandra. <laughs> Okay, so Gary's wife, Sandra, a resident and domiciled in Ireland, during 2014, they had the following disposals. So on the June 2014, Gary sold 10,000 shares in Dead Solution for 35,000. Details of Gary's acquisitions are as follows. 1st of March 99, 5,000 shares for 8,400. And the 15th of September 2002, 12,000 shares for 25,500. And the important thing with doing shares is to remember each time you buy a shares, you have a separate sale of shares in as well. So he sold 10,000 shares. So 5,000 will be coming from the 1st of March, 99. And the other 5,000 will be coming from the 15th of September, 2002. Okay, so number one. Shares. Okay, so we're selling so our proceeds. Five thousand shares out of ten thousand shares. Okay, by how much your proceeds are thirty five thousand. So that is 17,500. Okay, so you can do it like that, or you can do it, you've 10,000 shares, you got 35,000 for them, which is 350 per share, you can have 5,000 shares by 350, whichever you actually want to use. Okay, we've got a cost in March 99. So March 99 falls between April 98 and April 99. Is everyone okay with that for the, the dates, yeah? April 98 and April 99. So if we look at the tax reference material, I think it should be 1.212. Okay, and they cost us 8,400 euro. So 8,400 by 1.212. Which is ten thousand one hundred and eighty one. So we have a gain of seven three one nine. Okay, a charge of gain. for that one yeah? Yep. Okay, so our second one we're selling the second lot of five thousand shares. So Gary again. Okay, we've got a cost figure. And our cost in September 2002. So September 2002 was just 2002 tax year. Should be 1.049 for our indexation. Okay, so we're selling 5,000 shares out of 12,000. 
which cost us €25,500. The 5000 up to 12000 it costs us 25500 So it's by the right? Yeah. So that is 10625 Okay, so 10625 is our cost figure. Or you can do it by share if you want to. Do you know what I mean? If you want to say <coughs> 12000 shares, it costs me 25500 How much would 5000 have cost me? So 10, 6, 2, 5, multiplied by 1.0496 is 11146. We'll charge you again there. Of six three forty four. We should set up a sheet then as well, should we like to just have a Gary and Sandra? Yeah, Gary and Sandra, so we'd have them both. If I I don't have the anyway, I just I haven't got enough room. And the board, but I do that at the end and have each of them and show what they're they're both paying. So you, you, you just keep track of the and get the figures off of there after. So is that okay for the shares? Yeah. The important thing is that every time you sell, you buy shares, that's a separate disposal is going to be there. Okay, our next one in August 2014. Sandra sold the painting her husband had given her in October 2000 for €10,000. The market value of the painting in October 2000 was 4000 and Gary had originally purchased the painting in May 1980 for €800 at a car boot sale. So it's a sale of it, a non-wasting chattel, but it's also looking at transfer between spouses as well. Okay, so our proceeds are going to be the 10000 she's getting for it. But our costs going back to the original cost in May 1980 for when her husband bought it. Okay, because it's a transfer between spouses. Okay, so number two, number three, sorry, is Sandra. That's a painting. So we've got a proceeds. That is ten thousand. Okay, and our cost, which is back in May nineteen eighty. So May nineteen eighty falls between mm -hmm. April eighty and April eighty one, isn't it? And that is at the rate three point two four oh. Three point two four oh. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to write down there the cost, why are you going back to the cost in May 1980 was transfer between spouses rules. Okay, that's your rule there. Okay, so that is um, <coughs> how much does it cost? 800 euro, I think, is it? 800 by 1 or by 3.240. Oh. And that is 2.2. 
2592. So the important things on that one was the transfer between spouses rule that we took the cost back from 1980. So this is our part disposal rules. And this time we're taking, because he inherited from his father, okay, it's going to be the market value rules on the date he got it, which was 21,000. And we ignore what the, the father has bought it for. Okay, so this is Gary. And it's a part disposal. Okay, so we need um, three things. We need proceeds, do our part disposal formula, proceeds, cost, and the value of remaining mend. Three one seven zero. Yeah, three one seven zero. Okay, so you do this part over here first. Take your eight thousand, divided by fifty three thousand, and then multiply it by twenty one thousand. So that three one seven zero now is our cost figure. Proceeds, <coughs> which is eight thousand. We got our costs in January eighty-eight. January eighty-eight falls between April eighty-eight and April eighty-nine. So eighty-eight, eighty-nine, January eighty-eight. The wrong year. January 88 falls between April 87 and April 88, doesn't it? 87, 88. That's 1.583. Small enough, isn't it? Yeah, and the other one was actually in boxes. Wasn't in it? boxes, it was yeah. Okay, so 3170. 1.583. 
Wave A3 is 5018. And that is 2982 of a charge we gain. Okay, so our next one is Gary and Sandra sold a house they own jointly for 300,000 net of, of disposal costs in December 2014. This house was not their principal private residence. They had originally purchased, okay, so it's not their principal private residence, so we won't be looking for principal private residence relief. They had originally purchased the house in March 98 for 56,500. Legal costs of acquisition were 4,000. They spent 40,000 on an extension in August 2001, so that's enhancement expenditure and then in February 2002 they spent 5,000 on repairing the roof so repairs don't qualify for enhancement okay so we're going to have number five okay and this is Gary and Sandra okay and it's a house okay we've got four seats Okay, you want jointly for 300,000. 1,000 difference, okay, they really need to purchase the house. Okay, so we've got the costs. Okay, in March 98. Okay, so March 98 falls between April 97, 98, isn't it? And that is, let me see. 1.232. So we've got 56,500. You've got acquisition cost too. Legal cost of acquisition were four. So plus incidental cost. Of 4,000. Which is. 60,500 by 1.232. So that is 74,536. So we've got our enhancement. In August 01. So August 01 falls between April 01 and December 01, which is our 2001 tax year. And that is 1.087. Is forty three four weight. Forty three four eight is Forty three four eight, yeah, sorry. That's what's here in front of me, the calculator is about forty three four eight. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just found that repairs do not qualify as enhancement. So we've got one eight one nine eight four is our charge we give. And we give half each. So half each. Because it was 
jointly owned. So ninety nine nine two. Gates of Computation 2014, so we've got Gary, and we've got Sandra. We just keep, when giving me the figures there, the shares, the first one? 7319. 7319, is it? And 6354. 6354. And the payment was 7408. 7408. And the parts was it? 2982. What is it? 2982. There you go. So 7319, 9982 9, 9, Okay, just if you were doing this and you had knots, you take off your losses first. Okay, just so you'd have it in there. Then less are annual exemption. This is going to be our gain then. So 107, 647 minus 1270. <coughs> Okay, just your losses are always used before your annual exemption. And just, you know, just in case you have one more thing in here, you'd have your CGT on your non-wasting chattel. Which we had marginal relief. Okay, we'd have that at the bottom, we'd add that on. 
you know, if you did not weigh sea track and you had marital relief on it, then you would add that one here because that's your actual CGT liability. So the handout there where the tax reference material is on it. And it's the looming one, the very first one there. Okay, and this is coming from the November 2009 exam paper. So what we're actually looking at here is principal private residence relief. Okay, so he's sent to work for a year by his employers. He moved back into the house until March 2005 and he decided to take some time out and go travelling. He came back to Ireland on the 1st of May 2007 and he moved back into the house on the 1st of June 2007 and he remained living there until he sold it in May 2009. Sorry? Sorry, mate, on here, I'm actually reading the actually, I changed the year one to the proper dates. So that's what I'm looking at principal private residence relief, which we'll do there now in a minute. He gave his sister and shares in Bank of Ireland that it cost him a thousand euro on the 1st of May 92 and then now a value of 12,000 on the 1st of June 14. He gave them to Anne as a gift. So that's just sale of shares and you can give him a gift, there's many difference. It's the market value is going to be our rate we're going to use as our proceeds figure. Okay, so our next one then, Louis owns 75% of Buskers Limited, which he had been a full-time working director in since 1987. Okay, he had decided at 54 years of age he wants to play more golf, so he sold his shares on the 1st of October 2014 for 800 800,000 to an unconnected party. He owned 7,500 of the 10,000 1 euro shares of Buskers Link Corporation on the 1st of March 1987, where the shares were paid for a premium of 50%. So the premium of 50% did you pay a euro plus a 50% premium, so you actually paid 150 for the shares. Computer capital gains tax payable by Louis for 2014. And the capital acquisition tax payable by Anne, okay, we haven't done capital acquisition tax yet. If no capital gains tax is due from a particular transaction, please state why. Okay, so what I wanted to look at there was number three, really. Would he qualify for retirement relief? He's in his 54 years, so. Yeah, he's in 54, so he won't qualify for retirement relief. So if this was a tax planning question, which would be... The only way he would... Is if he was like ill and he had to. Had to, yeah, if he was because chronically ill. Yeah, if he's 54th year. Yeah, but he don't tell us he's, all he wants to do is retire and play a bit of golf. So he won't qualify him that way. So if you were, a further note to the question to actually get him more tax planning. So if you were a tax planning issue, what would you tell him to do? Hold on 12 months. And then would he, would he get it all? No capital gains tax? 500. He, he He'd be married on relief in 50. Oh no, unconnected party. Unconnected party, so it would be the 750. 750 yeah. So it would be 800,000 minus 750. 750. Yeah, 50. So you're paying 25,000 in.
capital gains tax instead of 800,000 minus whatever they are by 23%. Okay, so we're just doing the questions. Tax planning will come into them now. It hasn't, it isn't done in 2009, but the later questions will have the tax planning issue inside them as well. Advise him um, that it should he change any of these, do you know what I mean, and do them differently. Okay? Okay, so we'll start off with the principal private residence one first. So, number one, principal private residence. Okay, and you always calculate the gain as normal first. Okay, so we have this one is the first of 8,014 for 600,000. Okay, and selling the house for 600,000, does that give rise to anything else? <coughs> it's one of the, do the assets, do you need a, to get a capital gains tax clearance search for? Do you, if we sell land in buildings over 500,000, then you need to get a tax clearance search for it. Just in case, I mean, you haven't asked here, but just in case, do you, I mean, any time you look at a capital gains tax question, you'll be thinking all these things. They, they they could actually deduct fifteen percent off of them, and I give them the the balance. Okay. And if he didn't have it, they deduct fifteen percent. But if when he if he got it, then subsequently he get it back. With it. Yeah, that that fifteen thousand go as like uh, a capital gain tax paid for it. So like like doing when you were doing the competition course, just like that was what you did. That, do you know what I mean? You just took six hundred thousand, worked out your thing, and have to think about anything else. But for this exam, you have to be thinking about other things outside of just working up the calculation itself. Okay, so he had bought the house on the 1st January 2002 for €200,000. Okay, so we've got the cost in January 2002. So that's 2002 tax year. Is there a small bit of... Where's my thing? The very last one down there, yeah, 1.049. Okay, it's the last year we can claim it. So 1.049. Okay, so it's 200,000 multiplied by 1.049. Which is 209,000. That brings us down to a charge for gain of 390,000 before we apply principal private residence relief. Okay, so we need to find out our period of ownership. Period of ownership. He bought it in January 2002 and sold it in May 2014. Is that 12 years and 4 months? July, February, February, March, April, May. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, 12 years, 4 months. So 12 years by 12. So that's 144 and 4, 148 months. Is that right, isn't it? 12 months, 12 years up to there. And then we have April, uh, February, March, April, May, four months after that. So now we're looking for non-occupation. when he was sent to Cork to work for a year by his employers. He moved back into the house until March 2005, when he decided to take time out and go travelling. 
So does time you spent in Cork qualify as as occupation? It does, isn't it? It does because he had to do it for work. Yeah, he had to do it for work. Okay, just to put that note down for that, okay? So um working in Cork. Deemed occupation. Now he did it for he only did it for a year, so you can get four years, can't you? So the one year we qualify there. So that's occupation. We're looking for non-occupation. So he moved back into the house until March 2005 when he decided to take some time out and go travelling. He came back to Ireland on the 1st of May 2007. And he moved back into the house on the 1st of June 7 and remained living there until he sold the house on May 14. So will that qualify as... Is he working abroad? No. No, he's travelling abroad. He must actually be working. Yeah, so it's not... Sorry? He's, you see, he's, he's not actually, it must be for work, whereas he's gone, he specifically says he's gone for travelling, so it's non-occupation then. Okay, so we've got non-occupation from 31st of March 05 to the 1st of May 07. So that's March 05, March 06, March 07, March 07, and April then, isn't it? Trying to make it easy. Well, 2012. Two years. 26 months. 26 months. Yeah. With May, we only have one month here because you've got um, 1st of May or 7, is that a month or is that? No. You'd have March 7, March 6, and March 7 would be 24 months. Away well, you look at May or 7. That's March. 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 Oh yeah, but he came back to her on the 1st of May or 07 but and he moved, moved back into the house until the 1st of June, sorry, yeah, the 1st of June, yeah, I didn't read on the next slide. <laughs> okay, so 26 months is our non-occupation non and he remained living there until he sold the house on the 1st of May 2014. So we've only got 26 months. So your formula there, if you go back to your notes, is... Your chargeable gain by your period of non occupation all over your period of ownership. Or that's for the part that's actually taxable. Okay, so we have 390,200 multiplied by 26 all over 148. And that's the taxable gain. So remember when you're doing these, that's easy to talk out the non-occupation and working out the mm. first and just leave it like that. Divided by 148, multiplied by 26 is 68549. So that's the taxable portion of our gain, 68549. And the hardest part you know is printed by rhythm is working out your your months. Mm. Actually count the lap working out. We can do that, it's working out how many months on your fingers. Well they always give the twenty first of the first, they never give you the middle no, of the month. No, they'll never be the middle of the month, no. It'll always be the start of the end. Well you always get the last year anyway. Yeah, always the last year. Yeah. So that so the the, the the one in your notes is the exempt part. So where I've got in the notes, gain multiplied the period of occupation over period of ownership. That to get the exempt part, if you want to get the taxable part, you just work it around. You take non-occupation all over ownership. Is that all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So just do our shares. And shares in Bank of Ireland that cost them a thousand euro in May '92, and they now value twelve thousand on the first of June '14, and he gave them to Anne as a gift. Okay, so number two, shares to Anne. Okay, so we've got pro 
four seeds. Okay, and just because they're a gift, the proceeds are still going to be 12,000. We've got a cost in June, no, sorry, May 92. So May 92 falls between April 92 and April 93, doesn't it? So 92, 93. 23 is 1.356. And there are pebbles in your ball. So that is one three five six minus which is one four six four four. So you'd work out this bit, the business, and then you say how much more open employees is going to be. Yeah, but you, <coughs> you're not asked for it in this case here, but but you will see now when we go on further, you will be asked. Yeah. So I just put it down here, just a, a tax planning note. qualify for retirement relief. <coughs> and reduce his ability to capital gains tax. Because tax planning is part of the Okay, so we've got our proceeds here. This is our third one, and it's our business. Shares of proceeds. First of March eighty seven. That's April eighty six, isn't this? So it's eighty six eighty seven. One point six three seven. It's seven and a half thousand shares he own by the one fifty because it's the euro plus fifty percent premium, which is eleven thousand two hundred and fifty. Just put 
treat them together in, see how much taxi actually pays. Okay, so what's his name? Louis, is it just Louis? Louis. And our point from Ireland? 283 637. Let me just check my adding, subtracting. Do you get 860777? Oh, yeah. You added them up? Yeah? Yeah, I added the 1275. Yeah. 283 637. So we leave it there for tonight. Yeah. If you wanted to practice, if you want to do it, I know no one is interested maybe you want to do homework stuff, but if you did want to do homework stuff, you want to do the ones on page two there, as a couple of additional ones, just to, it's a principal private res, no, it's a shares, a vase, a cottage, and it's actually a very easy one, if you want to, it's you price, yeah, and the couple of additional one, if you want to practice, you price. If you want to, if you want to help, or I can just give you solutions next week so you know what they are. Yeah.